I think it's one of the most important issues that's ever confronted us. After all, ecocide is about creating a crime to help prevent the loss of the Earth's right to life. This is an area of forest the size of England that is being destroyed. There are toxic lakes. On Saturday, the 10th of March, the eradicating ecocide team came to the Stroud subscription rooms to talk about the campaign to make ecocide a crime. This film has some highlights from the head of campaigns, Joe Hall, and a personal message to Stroud from Earth lawyer Polly Higgins, who was in California at the time. When I read about this initiative for a new law to protect all life on the planet and make that a number one priority, every cell in my body just said, yes. You know that feeling? Yes. Over the last six weeks, the world campaign for making ecocide a crime has changed. It has gained in momentum. It is on a huge roll. We are part of an enormous amount of energy and passion to enable this new law to go to Rio. And Polly's itinerary goes something like this. Two weeks ago with Maori leaders in New Zealand. Last week in northern Canada with indigenous people. And this week with senators and lawyers in California. It became obvious to her, to me and the Ecoside team, that together it was impossible for one person to spread herself that thin. I realized it was the message and not the messenger. And we are all messengers. I think it's one of the most important issues that's ever confronted us. Um, I was going to talk briefly about Polly Higgins because I was hopeful, and I think a lot of you were hopeful that she could be with us today. Uh, Polly Higgins has dedicated her life to just one client, and that's the Earth. Born in Stroud. Uh, I'm genuinely sorry that I'm not with you on this lovely day. Uh, I speak to you from California where I've been out here in the States and in Canada for nearly three weeks now and very much looking forward to returning to the UK uh, and to my team. I've been missing you all. Here I am in San Francisco. I've been speaking on various platforms here. Tonight I'm going to be speaking with Bill Twist from the Pachamama Alliance and we're going to see how we can build towards and create collaborations for making Earth Law at the Earth Summit. Of course, also it's about supporting other organisations who are advancing earth rights as well as ecocide. And I believe that that's very important because that's two sides of the coin. After all, ecocide is about creating a crime to help prevent the loss of the earth's right to life. There's been a lot of noise and activity here in the States about how we the people start to speak out and change the rules of the game, actually put forward the new laws and rules that we want our governments to stand up and demonstrate bold and moral and courageous leadership. And of course our golden opportunity is at the Earth Summit. My last event which is happening on Saturday is with Paul Hawken. And as many of you know, Paul Hawken set up Wiser Earth. 1.2 million organisations exist in the world, social and environmental justice organisations. And we believe that we can galvanise those organisations and those people within them to seed out and pollinate, making Earth Law at the Earth Summit. This is truly a momentous occasion for all of us where we can converge and come together and call upon not just our governments, but business, but upon all of us to become voices for the earth and create something remarkable in 2012. And that is a legacy, a legacy for tomorrow, a legacy for our lives tomorrow and a legacy for future generations, for the children of tomorrow. And that's really what this is about. For me, this is about creating a beautiful new world that I want to be living in, in my lifetime. And I look forward to hearing what happens today with all of you in Stroud 
and for being back in the UK to see how much further we can push this and roll this out in a big way. So I'm here today because I believe that we in this room have the power to make great change together. Polly always says, it's not about me. And I really feel what Polly has brought to the world with the idea of this law of ecocide is it's a gift. I feel it's a gift that we have received and I hope that you will receive it today and I hope that we can pass it on to many others. The Athabasca tar sands in Canada. This is an area of forest the size of England that is being destroyed. There are toxic lakes so large they can be seen from space. It's not just affecting bird life, plant life, the water systems, it affects people too. People's water supplies being poisoned. And what I really felt a year and a half ago was what do we do about all of this? I felt it was not just a financial crisis that was happening, and not just an environmental crisis, because this level of destruction has been increasing and increasing. But I felt, maybe you do too, it felt like a moral crisis. It was like we'd forgotten some of our most important values. We'd forgotten those values of caring for both people and for other living things. Our response to that, though, was to vilify, to divide the 99% and the 1%. Business is evil, or the environmentalists are crazy. Whereas actually, I've got friends, and maybe you do too, who've worked for some of these big businesses, and I know they're not bad people. So how could we bring people together? Surely that's a value we should aspire to, bringing people together. And above all, I felt we really lacked a system that was just and was fair. That we kind of forgotten those basic values of fairness, of justice in the world. Because surely that isn't right. That change won't come through one election, and change won't come through one person. It comes from many of us standing together and working together over time and being absolutely determined. Someone sent me an email about this crazy but brilliant idea that this lady Polly Higgins had to create a fifth international crime <coughs> against peace and to make it an international law that would have effect all around the world that would outlaw mass destruction, long-lasting destruction on the kind of scale you see here. And I really felt like I'd received this gift. First of all, there's something so fundamental about language, about this word ecocide. Now, Polly didn't invent it. It's been around for 30, 40 years but it's not really in use and it didn't have this real definition. And it's certainly something that I haven't really heard. And there's something where you can't describe this, where you can't describe the scale of something that's happening, then that's part of the powerlessness. You could talk about murder, you could talk about mass murder, but that doesn't describe what happened in Rwanda, that's genocide. We're talking about, I don't know, nature's being destroyed, it doesn't really get to it. Ecocide, being able to put a name to what was happening, is so powerful. Next, it was about a difference in value. So often, we see nature as a commodity, right? That's how, how often, so often how things are today. That we see it's something that can be bought and sold. Something to go on a balance sheet. And that's true with the laws, many of them, that we have today. In the Amazon rainforest, there are laws outlawing, outlawing the mass logging that's happening, the mass destruction of the forest there. But it usually results in a fine. And so if you're a company, what do you do? 
you put that in your bottom line. You just put it, it's a cost. It's an externality, I think is the word they use. It's external, it's outside. I don't have to worry about it. What a law of ecocide says is it puts fundamental value on the earth, on nature. What's been happening until today is many of these instances around the world. If it was one or two, ten or twenty instances of this happening around the world, we could just start a campaign for each. We could fight each other. We might win. But actually what we're seeing is systematic miscarriages of justice. That's really what these are. At the moment, the system today is the polluter pays. So you try and clean it up maybe, you try and repair the harm afterwards, perhaps. What the law of ecocide says is, let's stop it at the source. If we make it a crime, it's so powerful a disincentive that it means the polluter doesn't pay, the polluter doesn't pollute in the first place. We're waiting for legislation country by country. There's 200 countries in the world. We can't wait for each and every one of those to put in place the right laws. By creating an international crime, it creates this level playing field all around the world. And fundamentally, it personalizes this. Companies don't commit crimes. It's individuals that make the decisions that lead to that. By making this a crime that ultimately could send you to jail, if you're the CEO of Shell or BP, then that's the biggest reason for you not to do it. This is not about prosecution. It's actually about prevention. What we want to do here is not stop business. We don't want to stop people having jobs. We don't want to stop actually businesses making money. But it's about the right kind of business. And it's about us setting the right kinds of rules for business to operate with. And it doesn't just hold the CEOs of these companies responsible, it holds the government ministers responsible. It holds the individual bankers, the investment bankers responsible for what they're funding. So the flow of money changes as well and goes into the right kind of business that we want. I don't come easily to finding a law as a solution. In fact, I never thought I'd love a law this much. But the more I've delved, in, delved into this, the more I've spoken with Polly, the more I've seen the other examples of how laws have worked. In London, 60 years ago, was the worst smog. In fact, it was killing, killed thousands of people, 1952, 60 years ago. But it was a law, put in place a law which curbed burning factories, chimneys, the smoke that was belching out into the city. It was a law that changed that. Come forward a little in time. Remember the ozone layer? It was an international law called the Montreal Protocol. An international law that curbed the use of CFCs. And so the more I've seen these examples, the more powerful it has struck me. This isn't just a law in theory. We tried it out. We tried it out. There was a trial, a mock trial, at the Supreme Court in London in September. Mock because we couldn't actually get a couple of CEOs to voluntarily turn up at this stage. <laughs> but we tried out everything else was real. A real judge, Michael Mansfield, QC, who you see there. He was just one of the, the lawyers that was there. We played it out in a real courtroom. We had to chop it down to one day, but we tried out how it would really work. And a jury of ordinary men and women found its two CEOs guilty of ecocide for what happened in the tar sands in Canada. We need much more than law, right? We can't just, we can't just leave it to law. And so a big part of what's happening with the campaign is working with many others, it's artists. This is just one image that's been used as part of a project we launched recently called Love Letters to the Earth. But the way we we'll reach people is partly through art. The power of an image, the power of a song. We need the environmentalists. We need those who care about the earth already. We need the Occupy movement. I believe there may be some people from Occupy Stroud here today.
We need the media to get on board with this. We need religious groups. And we're beginning to see some very important moral leadership from religious leaders. Rowan Williams and Desmond Tutu recently, amongst others, have spoken out about climate change and pollution being some of the biggest moral issues of our age. We need business. This man. This man is Charles Grant. Now, 200 years ago, Charles Grant was the biggest CEO of his day. He was director of the East India Company and the biggest user of slaves in the world. He had the most to lose, and actually many of the arguments around at the time were, we'd love to end slavery, but our businesses couldn't function. Our economy is built on it. How could we possibly change? But a movement grew, a movement of ordinary people like us, and that movement grew so strong, Charles Grant was one of the first business leaders who saw actually things have to change. And he demonstrated the greatest leadership of all because he said, although it seemed like I had the most to lose, actually we all had the most to gain by doing the right thing. And he said we have to stop using slaves. And when he did, it was like a domino effect. Other businesses fell and fell and changed their practices. And we feel there are Charles Grants in the world today. Maybe you know one. Ultimately, of course, what we need is the politicians, the lawmakers on board. There's a big opportunity coming up this year. It's the Earth Summit. It's taking place in Rio in June this year. Now, this is probably the most important environment summit for 20 years since the original Earth Summit. This really is a time when our world leaders can show leadership. At the moment, the draft text is weak. It's weak, weak, weak. There is nothing that's legally binding, a legal mechanism, in the way that we're talking about with the law of ecocide. Now, with just over three months to get there, I can't tell you whether or not they will make that jump. But let's push them as far and as high as we can and ask them to rise to the opportunity. There are people in this country pushing to get David Cameron to the Earth Summit. And if that's one thing you want to focus on, he said he couldn't go because it clashed with the Queen's Jubilee. <laughs> well, they moved the whole Earth Summit so that he and others could come. Let's hold him. Let's hold him to a higher standard. Let's get him there. But actually, the change is going to come if we each seize our own power. We all have people we can reach out to, whether it's the media, whether it's environmentalists, whether it's politicians of whatever color, whether it's business people, whether it's artists, singers, whoever it is, we can all be powerful. And that's really the message of today. Um, earth rights and ecocide are part of the same coin. You can't have companies um, being held responsible for committing ecocide without earth law because what they are essentially violating is the earth's right to life. So you need both. Get as many people as possible. Get your voices heard. Eventually they will have to listen to you. Eventually you will be stronger than them because there are more of us than there there, out there. So just hang in there, be determined, and have your voice really, really loud. They paint paradise, put up a parking lot. With a pink hotel, a booty and a swinging hot spot.